Okay, y'all, I'm over here in, um, I'm in Dayton, Ohio, and I'm over here with, uh, what's your name, man? Almighty Clay Tovin, Kevin Clay, man, the legend, the man, the myth, the mystery. Yes, sir. Okay, um, so, first of all, uh, okay, what part of Dayton are we in right now? What part of town is this? Right now, this, like, consider, like, Westwood, like, Arlington Course area. I'm not really from this area, but I'm all over this motherfucker. I'm a Day Dayton View area kind of guy, but this... Just like Westwood, Arlington Courts, RP, the West Side, but it's like split up in two sides. Like, I mean, like a lot of Dayton people gon' dispute that, but Dayton View and Westwood is like the two hoods that make up the West Side, the big hoods. But you got other ones around that, but you gotta kind of be affiliated okay. with one of them. <laughs> so you was born, born and raised in Dayton. Born yes. Here? Yeah. Okay. So I mean, my uh, people, we from Alabama, but I'm a Dayton boy, you know. Okay. So how does this neighborhood rank as far as like different areas in Dayton? Is it, is it one of the worst, one of the best, or, like kind of in the middle or what? Westwood is like the heroin capital of the world. You know, like Dayton known for the overdose capital. We ran the world on it. So like, oh, that started like right here where we at Westwood. Yeah, is, I heard about that. Yeah. Westwood is like. This dope, this this drug selling area, you know, this it ain't it, it ain't like a violent area, but it can get because of the dope. But this more like a money. All the niggas over here with money. They three hundred chargers, SRT boys. They they do this over here. It's all drug trafficking. Yeah, like like I was just telling you, somebody was as I was coming here, somebody was flagging me down on the street. <laughs> I ain't know what he wants. I don't know about it. He trying to get to know if I got some crack, you know. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So um. Well, for one, uh, like you, you kind of into cars, you know, and so what, what we got here. This I, I had one of these actually. This is a, this is a Buick. Um, yes, sir. Uh, Buick Regal. Yeah, Buick Regal. It, Grand it, Sport. You can't you can't really call this a Regal. This is a Grand Sport. Oh, you know? okay. Supercharged, 2002. So, what kind of engine? That's, is it three point? 38 supercharged. Okay, yes, 38 supercharged. I got, every, I got everything over kitted on this motherfucker. I got the transmission rebuilt. I got. I put all my money into my engine first. I'm gonna get it painted soon. I'm. I need a color. Matter of fact, in the comment section, help me out. I need. I don't know what color to paint it. I want to go flip flop. I don't know. Now, are they like big on? I know in Detroit they got all kind of car clubs. And obviously, that's the Moses City. They big on cars. So, are they kind of like that in Dayton too? Dayton is the little Detroit, you know that. Yeah. We GM, GM plant. Right here, you ride past the old GM plant, just getting to Westwood. The car culture in Dayton is the biggest part of Dayton. You don't sell dope in Dayton unless you're going to buy a car and put that motherfucker together. You don't go get a job in Dayton unless you're going to get a car and put that motherfucker together. You ain't nobody in Dayton unless you're putting a car together, and that's facts. We just like our culture is uh in the 80s, you know, you know, I, I I'm like a a student of the game. So my, I I came up with my pops. My pops was Candy Camaro, Gold Flakes, Candy Red with the Gold Flakes, Triple Gold D's, you know, sitting on hammers, all that like that's our culture. Like from the 80s to the 90s, like we got into uh uh just the rim thing like Dayton, you know, people don't understand Dayton wire rims is made here. We don't ride them. <laughs> we don't ride Dayton's, but Dayton's is made in Dayton. So that culture been here since the beginning of the time, the dope culture and the ride rims, putting cars together culture is like Dayton life, I promise. So what, um, and for those people that don't know, Dayton basically is right down the road from Cincinnati, like maybe 50 miles or so down the road, right to Cincinnati on the border of Kentucky. I, what's the difference? I know Cincinnati is a, is a little bit bigger city, mm -hmm. but what's what's the difference between Dayton and Cincinnati? Is it a big difference? Man, it's a very big difference. For one, Cincinnati is a big city. This is a town. We got about 400,000 people. We are the number one in murders, like per capita in Ohio. We number one in overdoses, like, like, so us being so small, and it's like everybody know everybody, and it's so much money here that it's kind of like it, it puts us at a odds when we go to Cincinnati like an average motherfucker here like the average broke motherfucker here is rich compared to a motherfucker in Cincinnati they never had a car they never really even had a couple thousand dollars so they they, they would think that we lying about the life that we living because we so small they think that 
taxes, you know what I mean? Like, so we don't, this Cincinnati dating thing is kind of like historic too, like, no disrespect to y'all Natty dudes, I ain't, I ain't bringing up old beef or nothing, but the Cincinnati dudes don't really get along with us, and we don't really get along with them, because it's like, you could be a nobody in dating and really be worth a hundred thousand dollars, you know, and be looking like this. Right. But you go to Cincinnati, and the same nigga who had them same opportunities as you, he he don't get to see that same type of shit because it's the population, like it's it's real sharky. So like that, me understanding life and knowing that, like that separates us. I don't have nothing to do with them guys. Like they, it's like right. like the poverty puts them at a different level, like of angeriness, you know. Right. Like I don't. What, like, what about other cities like in Ohio? How does Dayton compare to other places? I know Cleveland is farther away. That's way true, up north. True. Like Cleveland, how, how does it, you ever go up there? Yeah, I've been to Cleveland. Shout out shout out to them uh, heartless fellas that jumped me in the joint. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, I love Cleveland. I'm a Cleveland Browns fan. Uh, Cleveland is big as hell. Cleveland does not, we don't, we don't, since they so far, they about five hours away from us. That they don't really probably think about us and we don't really right, think about right. them. But I'm pretty sure some day niggas go up there and get some little cheese or whatever. But it's culture. Like, we don't really have. In yeah. jail, we got problems with Cleveland dudes, but we don't get to see them. It's more like. Cleveland closer to Detroit than it is to Detroit. And you know, Toledo. But, yeah. but we rock with Toledo. We rock with every man. Dayton motherfuckers. We, all 88 counties in Ohio, Dayton motherfuckers getting some money in every one of them. I swear. And that's what is makes us like. Like, like if you if you put it, Ohio is Columbus is the capital. Then you gonna go Cleveland. Then you gonna Cincinnati. Then you gonna say Dayton or Toledo, whichever. You know what I mean? We part right. of the top five biggest cities. But I feel like we the best. Like, right. Straight up. If, if you if you wasn't living here in Dayton, where where, where, where else would you want to live at? I'm from um, Anniston, Alabama, Talladega, Alabama. So you know, all my people like you know I'm a country boy. So I right, really go oh, okay. back home. Okay. Um, as far as the community around here, what what are the police like? As far as in the community, like do y'all get along with the police department? Are there major problems? I'm gonna be honest. Uh, in Dayton, we don't have like we don't have no racist police. We don't really like I know I'm, I'm speaking. For, That's a first. But yeah, as far speaking, as the people that I, I talk to, <laughs> not saying not saying that police ain't did nothing or this or that. You know, it's it's bad apples everywhere. But as a collective. Shout out to the, hey, it might sound like whatever to a whatever, but shout out to the Dayton Police Department because they don't be, they get on their wow. bullshit, but man, they've been minding their yeah, business, you know. Every day, For yeah. real, since the corona, like, they don't really calm down. So, like, I'm just speaking recently, man, I've been fucking with them because they ain't just been harassing motherfuckers, pulling motherfuckers over. They've been letting me slide. I've been sliding. <laughs> like, and they ain't been flicking <laughs> a nigga nothing. Like, I was love there, Was there rioting around here when all the rioting was going on everywhere? And you know when. Hell nah, we don't riot. No ride. I think that was what was that Cincinnati or something. Oh yeah, I know it was. It's, it's yeah, always the riding in Cincinnati. <laughs> yeah, we don't do that. Dayton motherfuckers like, like in Dayton, we got everybody so much about money and having a good time here. Like, like, like no disrespect, but like George Floyd, that type of shit go on. Like, not saying motherfuckers a joke about it here, but it'll kind of go over motherfuckers' heads because they everybody for themselves here. So it's like, like. Like mainstream shit don't really affect us, you know. I I just hope whenever there's no more of that rioting because like with this coronavirus and then the rioting we had while the coronavirus, I'm ready for everything to get back to normal. I don't want no more torn down, boarded up stores <laughs> everywhere you go, half everything closed. I, 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 you know what? I got a question for uh, Mr. Charlie Poe one time. How is it going to them places like Chicago? Like you know, here we don't have bulletproof. Um, store gas stations. We don't have too much bulletproof shit, you know. But I'll be watching your videos, and I I see you go to deep. Well, your hometown, Detroit. Like uh, you, you were going to like the Popeyes or something. That they don't have that here. Huh? Well, you know, when I coming up in Detroit, I thought that was everywhere. I thought it was normal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know like, it's like that in Chicago too, and, and some other cities I went to. But whenever I like, we started. We was kids, we started going like down south and going to other places. We come in the places and we was like surprised not to see the glass up because I thought everywhere had that. Man, that's crazy. And then after we found out Detroit's a little bit different from everywhere. <laughs> that, when I so, see that, that lets me know that we ain't really on the same type of time y'all is, you know? Yeah, it, 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 it's different. You know, you if you go on, I know of a liquor store in Detroit, it's on Gratiot, that don't have 
bulletproof glass and when you go in there it don't even look right that's you know crazy. they um they don't have the glass because that's one of the reasons they say 7-eleven don't even have no stores they have some now they, they got one near downtown and one downtown they just put there but I, I had heard that they wouldn't even put stores in detroit because they didn't want to have the bulletproof, the glass. bulletproof glass up in 7-eleven and, and, and by insurance regulation they had to have it that's crazy. You know, so that, that's what I had heard, you know. That's wild. So it's, it's, yeah, but I, I thought that was everywhere, man. I, mm -hmm. I, I didn't know it was just Detroit, places like Detroit, Chicago, and some other places, Gary, Indiana. You know, because I think they got it in Cleveland and some places, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I think Cleveland, Cleveland yeah. yeah and I think just Cleveland. I think in Ohio, I, I think the only place I've seen yeah, here. Yeah, a lot of... And it wasn't, you know, everything either, though. But they don't have it here. I would think they would have it here, because y'all got some kind of rough areas around we here, got too. Weird. I said we never wanted murders, but it's just... I don't know why they like that, you know. That I guess probably, like it maybe if the insurance don't, regulations don't require that for some businesses, then they don't get it. Maybe mm -hmm. the population, you know, you, Detroit is, uh, 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 you know what I mean, a big ass city. You know, if this right. is small as fuck, they ain't, I don't know. So let, let, let's, let's talk about uh, you and your, your your thing that you do. Your, well, I'm, so. um, I'm Almighty Clay Tobin. That's. What I prefer to use is my stage name, my producer name. I'm a producer. I'm a legend. Like a man, the man, the myth, the mystery in Dayton, Ohio. I started, like, I'm glad. I, I, man, I pleaded with Charlie to get him to come down here just so I could speak my mind on this. I started the Dayton rap culture. Like, when I say that, like, shout out to everybody that came before me. You know, this big shout out to DVH, you know, the Dayton View Halls. Big shout out to Mike Hall. You know, everybody came before me, you know. There was a lot of motherfuckers rapping before me. Even Chaos was rapping before me. But when I say I started rap culture, like motherfuckers like Chaos and Ready, they gonna have, they know that, like, the whole, I'm the chief keep around here. Motherfuckers wouldn't even do what they are doing. I, I, I'm so much of a trendsetter and people don't know it. I'm so much of a godfather of this shit and people don't know it that I just wanted like, I'm gonna let Charlie Bolt interview me and I'm gonna say it on his, on his platform and let this be known, like, I'm the first motherfucker to ever make a, a young nigga, I was probably 12, 13, to really be in the streets, really be doing everything a motherfucker say they doing, making my own shit, trying to make my own label, with a with a killer team, who scout or nothing, shout out Buck, RP Tom Tom, Free T Streets, shout out the whole Wasis, Fabo, NTE niggas trying to eat, Young Street nigga, making my own beats, my old raps, tell a real life story around this motherfucker. Really live this shit every day, really be in the trenches every day. A lot of motherfuckers done died because they thought that they was something that they wasn't. And we gonna stand on this shit. We gonna get some millions out this music on my life. Shout out to everybody that's doing their music shit, but we got a real story to tell. A lot of my niggas gone. A lot of my niggas still trying to live off of a dream that I started. And everybody around this motherfucker, y'all living my dream. Y'all trying to do some shit that I started. And y'all don't even know that. That's cool. And enter into yourself. You ain't gotta like me because of uh, what you heard about me. You ain't gotta like me because of who I deal with. But just know that what we coming with is a hundred. And that's coming from God. And we gonna do this shit forever. I, uh, um, I started uh, probably about 15, 16, I, I made a uh, album at Go For Your Mouth. It was called HSG, Top Notch Ball, and never really did, I never even put it out on the internet, you know, later on. I was young as hell, music probably trash. It's good as hell, it started some shit. And um, that that gave me a little something, and I I, I, I had influences, it was guys from Dayton that I, I looked up to. They made great music, chaos, ready. So I was one that, that 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 broke that barrier and said, man, rap on this beat, rap on this beat. And at the same time, I was putting my own team together. You know, guys I grew up with, real view shit going on. At the, every day, every day, real view shit going on. We, we, we said it made audio crack. That was probably about 2005. RP TZ, TZ motherfucker, yup. We made audio crack. That motherfucker took off in the hood like real view legends off a of, off a of little tape before anybody ever made any kind of little music tape or anything. Getting some hood niggas doing their own thing. I did it. After that, I started getting me so you know probably about 16, 17. I dropped my first whip, my uh my 84 Chevrolet two door, not a Landau. 
put that bitch on all silver D's. I couldn't afford no gold D's, and I ain't even want to. I was, I was like 17, sitting on 16 inch dating. I'm still in school. You know, I put together my uh, another little tape after a little audio crack, and I would start working with uh, Davo. Met my nigga Kelso, and we made a historic song called. 24s round here we ride 24s 22s flats and they chrome 26s on the truck a real hood classic right it was on commercial bt commercial you know shout out to imagine that hood put us on the commercial every day everybody woke up every day seeing us on commercial every day your low holes you know the rim song after that uh motherfucker i ain't gonna say his name but a producer i used to love this producer he, he, I used to inspire my sound behind him, but I never loved him or respected for what he did. You know, he invited me to a studio. It's like, man, I was a young nigga. Like, hey, man, you got the sauce on and making a beat, man. Why don't you make a beat with me? I made a beat with him. I just played some shit like that. He never heard this story either. Dun, 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 dun. I played that shit. That shit was weak as hell. Like, I ain't like your equipment. I ain't like none of your setup. And you always was dick sucking. You know, and you a hoe. But... <laughs> I says, I, you, you damn near forced the song out of me. And I was like, I, I remember Kelso would say, you know, everybody know, everybody on my side know the truth. Like Kelso was like, man, let's get up out of here. I'm like, nah, I'm gonna I'm say something for the OG. He want me to do something, do some shit with him. I got on the song and said, <clears throat> dope boy fresh, rocking my specs, Kooji down to the socks off of slanging them rocks. I bop. What a dude, let me holl at you. Money ain't shit. Throw a couple dollars at you. You know, that motherfucker took that shit. I left that day. I was sick. I had my 80. That was my second album I had dropped. When I when I when I was at his studio doing that shit, I had a 1985 Pontiac Grand Prix. You know, not a two plus two. I want one of them. But all silver. Just like I, I dropped them silver thing. I love, you know, you find some, you know, you know car. You a T you from Detroit. You know, you gotta find a bitch of silver, it'd be it'd be that thing. So I'm in 85 Grand Prix. I had that bitch on 20 inch albums. Big meaty ass tires, 350 duels. That bitch was running. The police, listen, the police still got that bitch to this day. They never caught me in it though. Yeah, what you know about that? Y'all <laughs> niggas just now start doing high speeds. You niggas, listen, you're not a high speed champ unless you done bust them on rims. If your shit ain't tight, listen, listen, y'all niggas need to start listening to E40. Like, yeah, that shit pretty, but is it running? Is it running? Yeah, my cut dog, my regal thing running. Boom. I, I left the studio riding like that. I'm chilling in the hood, doing my thing, young nigga. Nigga was popular as hell back then, so it was like everybody's around. Bitches pull up on me like, like I heard your song in the club. Like, hold on, we ain't got no song in the club. We was no, like, we, we was this hood local. Motherfuckers say they heard my song in the club. Like, what song? They're like, Doughboy Fresh or something. Man, that motherfucker, I said eight words on a nigga's beat that I did not like. I made the beat too. I made put parts in on that beat made eight words on that motherfucker that motherfucker gave it to another nigga that he was you know what i mean that he was inclined to i ain't get into all that because this shit gonna be worldwide but y'all know man motherfuckers blew that shit up man doughboy fresh is a motherfucking classic around here so every time y'all listen to y'all listening to me and y'all don't even know that you know so after that we just turned up it was bmc and then we got the who's scaling you know who's scaling forever like like and motherfuckers just like we was the first, and we all almighty, almighty vice lord nation, big C's. You know? But goddamn, man, I'm almighty Clay Tobin, man. I just told one of the wonderful stories today in Ohio. I ain't gotta go, go deeper than that. I'ma say, look me up, almighty Clay Tobin on YouTube. I got a uh, song called Colors, Monte Carlos and Regals. I'm sitting at like 3,000 views on that. Um, I got an album called Love, Truth, Peace, Freedom, Justice. Got an album called All Is Well. Got a uh, mixtape called 56 Grams, where well, it's just a single, 56 Grams, two songs. Get the innuendo. I just dropped 112 Grams about two, three days ago. Got another album called Ron Harper, Volume 1, Daquan Cooking. You know, I appreciate Charlie for coming down here fucking with me. I just wanted to show y'all something. I've been watching these videos just like y'all, man. This motherfucker, he a real, hey, he's a real man, you know, and I, I respect that. I just wanted to show some light of my city and show y'all me, you know, so. That's yeah. what I was coming to do. All right, and, and, and we gonna put the uh, I'll put the links down there for your social media too on the uh, video. 
Yes, All right, sir. so we signing off here from Dayton. I'm trying to give you another angle so I can see you doing the best. Let's see how I can just make a... Can I, can I spit me something? Huh? Can I spit something? Matter of fact, I'm talking about rap shit. Can I spit something one time? You got, you got something 30 real seconds. quick. Yeah, 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 just a freestyle. Uh, you ready? Yeah, go ahead. Hey. You don't know how I feel to be a thousand there, my nigga. Cause everywhere I take a break, it's a snake thick and I got a thousand there, my nigga. My bitch don't know shit. My child in there, my nigga, gave a bitch some shit. Gave a bitch some kicks, it ain't shit. I got a thousand pair, my nigga. Money's a little low family. I used to let my money blow family. That's when I had no family. My mama used to split my bills up. My Grand Prix was real tough, but this year coming through, candy on folds with the gills up. Used to ain't like a bitch until I met my wife and shit. She looked ooh wee and Gucci with her heels up. That's my little Buddha butt. I don't know who to trust. Bitches whisper and talk. I shoot them up. Tell his body, get in the chalk. I got rich without these niggas. Look at this gift that I bought. Nigga.